This is the Turf Zone Podcast, your central information and news hub, bringing together professionals from turf associations across multiple states to share things to help you in your business. Brought to you in partnership with our friends at the Pennsylvania Turfgrass Council. Now, let's get in the zone. Welcome to the Turf Zone. In this episode of Pennsylvania Turfgrass, we feature an article titled, Looking back at the fall army worm invasion of 2021, written by Ben McGraw, PhD. It would have been difficult to convince me in January of 2021 that there would be a bigger insect news story than the emergence of 17-year periodical cicadas. These red-eyed menaces were the talk of the town early in summer, with their near-constant humming driving those who work in landscapes to near madness over the course of several weeks. Little did we know at that time, that a more insidious pest would be on the verge of invading the Commonwealth and about to cause turf grass damage on a scale that has not been observed in many years. Here we look back at the Great Fall Armyworm outbreak of 2021 to discuss what can be done in future years to prepare. Homegrown problem. The majority of our destructive turf grass insect pests are introduced species to North America. Invasive insects are believed to be more problematic outside of their native distribution since they are unlikely to occur along with their natural enemies, thus allowing for greater population growth. Unlike the majority of white grub species, mole crickets, crane flies, the fall armyworm is native to the Americas. However, they are native to tropical or semi-tropical areas and incapable of persisting year-round in most areas of the United States. This means that no stage is capable of surviving in areas that experience freezing temperatures, limiting permanent populations to southern Texas and Florida. Each spring, moths in these areas deposit thousands of eggs that will hatch and become caterpillars. These voracious eating machines will feed on numerous host plants, including corn, soybeans, rice, and turf grasses, warm and cool season. The literature would suggest that most turf grasses are susceptible, including Bermuda grass, fescues, rye, and blues. The caterpillar develops through six to seven instars, pupates in the soil, forming a reddish brown cocoon, then emerges as a moth. Some moths will remain in the region, deposit eggs to become the second generation of caterpillars. This scenario will play out continuously, making for year round threats to turf grass loss in the South. However, some moths will be dispersed on the wind hundreds of miles, which then become infestations in northern and western regions. The number of fall armyworm generations a region may experience is largely dependent on the moth's migration north. The Carolinas might have several fall armyworm generations per year, whereas Pennsylvania and points north may experience one generation per year. Surveillance of moths has shown fall armyworms capable of being dispersed as much as 500 miles in 24 hours. The Northeast does not typically experience fall armyworm turf grass damage, but rather observe boom years when southern storm activity is active in midsummer. Why were fall armyworms so bad in 2021? I have only witnessed one such destructive outbreak this far north in my career, but it was limited to a much smaller region in western New York. It is unclear as to how fall armyworm populations reached outbreak levels so uniformly across Pennsylvania this year. Some theories are that insecticide failures are becoming more common in the south, leading to larger populations to disperse northward. We don't expect to see fall armyworms each year, much less such strong insect activity late in summer. Therefore, detecting these insects usually occurs when they are third or fourth instars and turf is beginning to turn droughty. Given that the majority of the damage we observed in Pennsylvania was in the last week of August, and applying a little back calculations on the larval development time to reach these later instars, we can assume that the moths entered the region sometime around the end of July. Years where there are large storms or hurricane activity in midsummer would allow ample time for the moths to arrive in the north and develop to larva where their feeding is very apparent. It's possible that fall armyworms do frequently make it to Pennsylvania, but arrive too late in August to develop to large larva and cause massive turf loss before experiencing freezing temperatures. What should I be aware of next year? I do not think that fall armyworm is a pest that we can expect to be an annual issue in Pennsylvania. However, 
With changing climates and increased storm activity and power, it is possible that we could see more consistent dispersal of fall armyworm moths into Pennsylvania on an annual basis. At this point in time, I don't think fall armyworm is a pest where preventive measures should be put in place prior to arrival in Pennsylvania. However, there are opportunities where prevention of other pests will reduce likelihood of fall armyworm damaging turf stands. Those managers that use chlorintranilipril for preventive white grub control were sleeping well at night during the fall armyworm scourge of 2021. This preventive measure continues to provide exceptional control of white grubs and caterpillars when applied in spring. I received many photos of distinct lines between a celebrant treated and damaged turf grass lawns or golf course fairways in 2021. There are numerous curative control options for those that do not experience white grub issues or who have higher tolerances for insect damage in general. This approach can be effective, but must combine scouting with timely interventions. Hindsight is always 2020, and with turf loss to fall armyworm still fresh in our minds, Pennsylvanians should be on the lookout for early arrivals in mid to late July rather than waiting until damage occurs in late August or even later as observed in previous years. Caterpillar control in general is pretty simple, and we live by a few tenets. One, treat them early in their development. Two, apply contact insecticides to the foliage. Three, don't water it in or mow it off. And four, apply late in the day so the caterpillars acquire the residue while foraging. Pyrethroids are probably the most efficacious contacts available, but spinosads and endoxicarb are softer chemistries. Entomopathogenic nematodes are a great biological or non-toxic option, but require some attention with storage, handling, application, and post-application care. If you have a weedy lawn like me, then doing nothing is also a viable alternative. Although fall armyworm damage can be severe, the recovery on mature turfs is surprisingly good with light and frequent watering and a little fertilizer. For photos associated with this article, check out our show notes. And don't miss an episode of Pennsylvania Turf Grass. Subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can also visit us at theturfzone.com. You've been listening to The Turf Zone. For more episodes of The Turf Zone, visit theturfzone.com and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast app.